welcome to another edition of Cavalier Family Podcast. Cavalier Family, however you want to say it. Uh, we don't have to go over, obviously, the introduction, as many of you who have been listening already know that every month we pick a different year and talk about the, uh, you know, the high points of entertainment. So every week we choose a different topic. So for example, um, this is a new month. So we will be starting in 1981. And this week will be the top TV shows. The next week will, of course, be the top cartoons. Third week will be top music. And then the last week of this month, we will be discussing the top movies. Um, the only updates as of right now um, is, of course, we will be having a dad campaign in Lakeland, Florida. Be sure to watch us for uh, the location as, well, I mean, I'll just tell you the location. May 22nd, we will be hitting up the Lakeland Square Mall. Uh, myself, as well as a group of guys, will be wearing our dad outfits to bring awareness to this, uh, to the YouTube, to the podcast. And we'll be telling dad jokes as well and giving away stickers, giving away t-shirts. So if you're in the location, go ahead and follow us on so all social platforms to keep, uh, keep up to date on that. Also, we started a TikTok, uh, the one social media that I said I would never do ever. And you know, unfortunately, I put my foot in my own mouth. So go ahead and find us at Cav Fav, or I'm sorry, Cav Fav Dad. That's C A V F A V Dad, because that whole TikTok is going to be nothing but dad jokes. You like lawnmowers, you like dad jokes with lawnmowers, that's the channel for you. You like dad talking about wood, by wood I mean lumber, dad jokes for you. So again, go ahead and follow us on TikTok. Um, as well as, you know, I'd like to thank, thank Kevin Holmes, who did the intro and outro, Justin Dye, who's created many of the music elements, researcher Stephen Dawson. And if you're watching on YouTube, you see him now, you see him through this introduction. We have our boy, Roback. Um, we've missed him greatly. And, you know, Ro, go ahead and, you know, update us on what's been going on. I know some of the stuff that you told me behind the scenes, you can't specifically say, but just for the audience, you know, just go ahead and give like a general basis. How have you been? What have you been up to? Uh, nothing much, man. Uh, well, a lot much, but um, just been moving um, from like the Joshua Tree, Palm Spring area, um, move over here to San Diego uh, where it doesn't, you know, doesn't rain. So they say, but it's been raining uh, <laughs> since I've been here, um, which, which isn't a bad thing. Because from moving to the desert to here, uh, just basically a lot of work, um, a lot of transmission, just been going on, like new place, you know, um, a lot of blessings coming in my way. And uh, I love it. So I'm participating in, in Ramadan. Um, so I'm usually hungry all day. <laughs> How's that going for you? Uh, Especially well, coming from... It, Especially coming from like uh, when we lived with each other, you always ate. I never saw yeah. a, a fork not in your mouth with food. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and I don't mean that yeah. as, you know, Anderson ate and, you know, he was a big dude. No, Anderson's always been this skinny, always this muscular. It, it was like the Rock's diet before the Rock yeah, actually was, introduced uh, his diet. Yeah, I was I was 155 back then. Now I'm a whopping 215 trying to get the 225. But it, it is, it is uh, a hard hard uh, thing to do because um, I'm not eating all day. So that kind of, you know, puts you in a place where you have to control your emotions, thought process and stuff like that. And just get into, you know, meditation and stuff like that. That's, that's what I use it for. Um, you can drink water though, and, right? No. Nothing? Until sundown. No, like no water, no liquids. It's just dry. No food, nothing. Yep. So what happens right. if you're dehydrated? Best of Live luck to you. Faith, my boy. <laughs> Live by faith, my boy. Uh, but when when the sun goes down, um, that's when you can you can feast. So um, that's when I tend to like drink a lot of water um, and then eat to replenish, you know, myself and eat enough to like you know hold me, hold me, kind of through the day most likely so and um i try to get up early at times before the sun comes up so i can drink some water and have something to eat to hold me over during the day so 
Um, it is a process. It, it is a process, uh, but it's, it's definitely, it's definitely beneficial. Like even if you're not um, Muslim or anything like that, um, you know, it gives you time to meditate and just, just be a better you. Well, that's good. Uh, so, yeah. I... And so me, me being the big dude um, where I have to eat and then I even go to the gym late at night. It's like nine o'clock by the time I'm, I'm heading to the gym. So like, cause I got to eat and then I go to the gym, come back, try to, you know, eat some more because mm-hmm. I'll be hungry by the time I get back. So yeah, just a lot, um, a lot going on. Um, I met someone, um, you know, hopefully things go well with that. Uh, she's a great girl. She's a great girl. Um, but you know, I live, I live by the day. So whatever happens, happens. Yeah, all in good That's fair. Well, it's good. To have I'm you glad back. to be back. Yeah, yeah it's glad it's good to, to good to have you back. Be able to uh, spitball, have fun, enjoy. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the listeners or watchers are sick and tired of seeing just my face and my voice. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Now, now you get to uh, listen to a um, sexy black man's voice. So there you uh, go, right ooh. into your ears. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I should get my smooth talking on. <laughs> all right um so as far as uh updates as far as i go um if i don't do it yet uh i here it is uh, i did get to experience a new guardians of the galaxy ride uh with my wife at epcot today um Ooh. yeah that that was fun um it was a joy um So for those of you that don't know, it is an attraction that took over Ellen's uh, energy over in Epcot, over at Walt Disney World. Um, The the story and the premise is basically evil celestials kind of like trying to destroy like a planet and stuff like that. And the Guardians in the Galaxy are there to help. And, you know, you're kind of in the middle of everything. Um, And it is the world's longest coaster, um, which it it doesn't feel like it. like i honestly wanted more out of it i could write it like all day um the the beauty of it is the smoothness uh you start off going backwards um it's not that big of a coaster so the biggest biggest thing that i can kind of compare it to is like uh, space mountain a little bit um but not that fast i would say not as fast unless if it was because of the smoothness of the ride it just didn't feel that way but there are moments where like you do turn sideways so then like uh in the middle of what you're seeing is like a planet or like a moon or something like that um and the whole time you're listening to music too um so during our coaster time we listen to uh everybody wants to rule the world uh if you're not familiar with the song it's the 80s song of everybody wants to yeah exactly so we listened to the entirety of that whole song doing during the attraction and i was i was singing um and luckily enough the music was so loud that i'm pretty sure nobody heard me singing um but the sad part about on how loud the music was i personally could not hear what was going on um so like during through the whole attraction you had the characters like gamora rocket uh star lord they would kind of speak as far as like what's happening with the attraction right like if they need to send you off into uh hyperspace or jump space but you may hear like a little bit of it but because of like the volume uh, difference between the two you could hear more of the music than you could hear the voices uh, so I kind of wish that they kind of just dimmed it down a little bit um, whenever they would talk kind of like how you know you would uh, crescendo the voices and decrescendo the music and then as the voices stop then you uh, re-crescendo the music like get louder um, but that wasn't like that it was like uh, if I was singing right now and you were trying to talk to me that's how it sounded um but other than that i mean i can't really complain about that because you know we had a great song and just sitting there watching guardians and listening to the music it was just a joyous fun fun attraction all in all 
Um, again, very smooth. Like it literally felt like it was just coasting the whole time, like just coasting left and right and left and right. Kind of like, um, uh, I would say like, you know, a joyous car ride. Really, and it was, it was, it was back uh, going backwards. Yeah. So in, in the very beginning, so it's, it, it's all indoors too, by the way, it's all indoors. It, it, rem- it reminds me of that, that one ride that was, I think it was that in, um, animal kingdom with yeah. the um the yeti with the yes yeah, yeah. yeah so most, it like mostly red yep uh expedition everest i will say though uh expedition everest i felt like going backwards is a little faster um and it had more of a steeper incline uh because yeah. basically with this one you start off going backwards and then it's very similar to the mummy over at universal where you get to the point where like the track kind of switches Mm-hmm. and then you go to a different section and that's kind of where it what happens there um but all in all i mean i loved it i really wish the merchandise store was open unfortunately it wasn't uh and again it, as far as smoothness goes like it just felt like if you're on a joyous car ride and you're just going from lane to lane just easy swerving through the whole thing no hard turns no hard swerving just coasting really and it was nice um one of the smoothest roller coasters i've ever felt um and you know being a marvel fan it's it's good to have attractions that you love and with characters that you love being represented um i mean spider-man avengers um over in avengers campus with you know guardians in the galaxy that's great but it's good to have something that's not located in universal studios here in florida like over in Walt Disney World. So um, would I wait about two to three hours? Because it's supposed to open Memorial Day weekend. So would I wait three, four hours for it on a daily basis? Like if we was visiting, maybe it was if it was my first time. But anytime after this, I don't think I'm going to wait no more than 45 minutes for it. Mm-hmm. Um, like it was fun. It was joyous and stuff like that. Um Honestly, I don't think there's any attraction I would wait an hour and a half for anyways, <clears throat> but it was a good experience. It was a fun experience. And I'm grateful that, uh, you know, especially with what's going on with Disney right now, that they uh, provided us an opportunity to kind of just experience that um, mm-hmm. because for a long time they did, they did have us like blocked out, uh, which, you know, grateful that that's been lifted. Um but it, with everything that's going on with how busy it is and, you know, a, a lot of uh, terminology that we're hearing are like ga- uh, cast members are, um, you know, not the happiest anymore. Um, and, and I think a lot of it has to deal with like COVID and stuff like that, that ended up happening. It, it was a good, it was a good thing for cast members to experience, to be able to get something new, to get um, a new feeling and, you know, get, get us excited for. So I'm very grateful for that. But if you're visiting and it's open, yeah, absolutely. Try it once. Um, I, I can't really confirm because of, um, you know, I don't know, but I thought that there was more than one playlist. Like if you go onto an attraction and you get a different song, um, <clears throat> kind of similar to, rock and roller coaster over at Mm -hmm. hollywood studios you'd always get a different aerosmith song here i thought it was the same way i don't know um i can't really confirm but that leaves didn't they shut down rock and roller coaster uh no not from my knowledge yeah it's still up yeah because i know during our time there there was rumor that it was going to be uh no longer aerosmith it was going to get changed to hannah montana or joe jonas and the jones brothers (laughs) But yeah, um, so yeah, if you guys know, if you've experienced the attraction, leave a comment below, let us know, because I would love to hear your guys' input on it, your take on it. If I'm correct or wrong, as far as the playlist, again, let me know, because that's more education for me. And that's the whole point of this podcast. That's the whole point of this show. So then that way we can educate you guys, because I don't know about you, but I love being educated and knowledge and research and all that stuff. Um, And, you know, I guess we'll have to move on to our next segment. Otherwise, just leave up 
the uh, that saying that my wife says is I don't say a short story or a long story short. I say a short story long. <laughs> so with that in mind, let's jump back to 1981. Back in time. All right, and welcome to 1981. Uh, on this week, we will be discussing the top TV shows. Though during the transition, Ro was uh, telling me a, a good point on his uh, side side of things. Because in case if you guys don't know, like I'm big into entertainment, but a lot of you don't know Ro's side. I know with uh, Lee, who's you know been involved with the show, who's come on, like he has talked about how he's there for the entertainment and how our uh, opinions different are different from one another. So th- this is great what Anders, uh, what Roe was talking about, just because of the fact of, you know, it gives you guys an insight of what, what, what he feels and what he's, well, you know, I'll let Roe discuss it. Let Roe. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was saying that, like, I, I'm a, I'm a big movie person. Like I, I like movies. I like TV shows. Sometimes I, I binge watch like specific series. And, like, I may not know the year, like, it's from, but, like, uh, it's more, I've noticed, like, everything I've watched has been, like, almost new gen, like, from 2000 and up. And, like, any movie before that, like, I haven't, like, really looked into unless somebody told me about it and was like, oh, you should check this out and you should actually watch it. Because, like, there's movies, like, it took me a a while to watch like you know boys in the hood like uh, oh, such a great movie yeah like um you know movies like that like i haven't like i didn't see like growing up because i was more in the like what's coming out now you know mm-hmm. and like being a critic of what's coming out now and then it's like yo you've never seen this oh, no, i ain't see it like because like i'm so into the movies that are like now like how how technology has you know like advance from like movies movies of the old and like this kind of gives me you know a a more broad perspective of you know how movies were back then Mm -hmm. versus now I mean Mm -hmm. I'm still a new gen uh movie person like uh it somebody really has to sit down and say hey we're gonna let's check this movie out and like I have been um uh like the Hannibal the old Hannibals yeah like I didn't watch till like somebody actually sat down I was like we're gonna watch this and then like I watched it and I was like oh this was this wasn't half bad like you know what I thought how I thought it would be you know it turned out way and I was like oh this is actually pretty good you know so like I think I'll always be that way because then like if it if it's actually pretty good then it's like a surprise to me yeah yeah and see that that's what i mean like uh a lot of like the viewers and listeners don't know but like before we uh stop the segment and the transition like uh i i actually told ro to like oh stop what you're saying right now because this is perfect (laughs) this is perfect to like describe to all you guys only because of the fact that it gives you uh the listener the ability to kind of you know relate to him I know there are some who can relate to me. I know sometimes our opinions differ, whether if it's Roe or I, or like you guys and us, but you know, I I'm all about relating, whether if it's the characters I write in the screenplay, or if it's the discussion that Roe and I have uh, as far as TV shows or opinions and stuff. Like I, I love people. I love hearing other people's opinions and, you know, I just love relating. So I, I wanted to share that, uh, be able to share his point of view and wanting to share his point of view. And I'm sure he wanted to share his point of view with you guys, just because of the fact of, you know, it, you're not the only person that, you know, thinks like Roe or, you know, is like that. And it, it, cause you know, it's all about relating to somebody. I mean, yeah. that's the whole point. And the whole point is education too. Like for an example, Silence of the Lambs, Hannibal, Red Dragon, like all those movies you've never seen, then you have to see them. You're like, Oh, you know, it's not that bad it's all like education and and that standpoint that's kind of what this show is also about too is educating on what we don't know like there's a lot of things as far as tv shows go that you know i personally don't know that i'm learning 
on its own too. And like, there's so much information here, but you know, Roe is full time. I am full time. I work uh, four, if not five, 12 hours a day for working. So I'm tired and well, on my days off, you know, full time dad, uh, husband, stuff like that. So like, it's, it's constantly busy, not only that, but running the business, getting the screenplays in. And, you know, we all have our personal stuff, but there's so much information that we'd love to share for you. And that's kind of like a lot of the stuff is all the high and key points of what we think is the most entertaining for you guys. Um, and with that in mind, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump into the top TV shows, which uh, number one, uh, and the information, by the way, comes from Wikipedia. The info is from IMDb. Number one is Dallas. This had a 7.1 out of 10. The series ran from 1978 to 1991. It is about J.R. Ewing. Ewing? A Texas Ewing. boy. Ewing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so <laughs> J.R. Ewing, a Texas oil baron, uh, uses manipulation and blackmail to achieve his ambitions, both business and personal. It starred Larry Hagman, Ken Kirchival, Patrick Duffy, Linda Gray, Victoria Principal. Uh, a few of the fun facts is the spinoff, Don uh, Knotts, I'm sorry, not Don Knotts, he was an actor. The spinoff of the show, Knott's Landing, was created first, but the producers were unable to sell it, which, you know, happens a lot. That's kind of like, you know, Star Wars. Uh, George Lucas said, you know, uh, we're going to start off at four, five, six, kind of introduce everybody. And then we'll go back to the prequels. But anyways, uh, they developed the show instead. And when that became a success, then the network asked for the spinoff, which, of course, is where you got Knott's Landing. The theme song of to this show was voted the number one best television theme song of all time in a recent entertainment weekly poll. Uh, unfortunately, I do know that Dallas has been on our list in the past. I personally have never seen it. Um, you're shaking your head like you've never seen it either. Um, the, what I know one of the Western shows that are really good right now is uh, Yellowstone. Uh, you- I've heard. I've heard. And I'm in trouble because uh, if my friends are watching this, um, I promised them that I would start it. But okay, yeah. ha- have you seen Sons of Anarchy? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Sons of Anarchy is basically a television program that's based on real life of Hell's Angels, like the early stages of Hell's Angels. Oh. So. I know what I know what it's about. I just haven't like okay. I just haven't <laughs> had the urge, I guess, to watch it. Like I've I've recently actually had the urge to watch Mayans. Okay. Uh I think that's a spin-off yeah. Mm-hmm. of yeah. I've had the urge to watch that, but then like all I can think about in my head is like I can't watch Mayans without watching like <laughs> Sons of Anarchy. So I'm kind of like stuck, you know, torn in between starting it so uh, it's a good show it's a good show uh, my wife stopped after episode six because her favorite character dies i'm not going to tell you who it is but if you've seen the show you know you you know who it is um so basically yellowstone is like a western version of that like a modern western version cowboys doing mm-hmm. uh going against the law type thing so it was fun it was entertaining um that's that's honestly the best thing that I could compare. I mean, it's definitely no walking Texas Ranger. It's didn't better. you get? Uh, didn't you try to get casted for uh, Sons of Anarchy? Probably. Uh, or is it just a look? It's probably just the look. As <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chuck Norris. Um, so number two, we actually have sixty minutes, seven point four out of ten. Uh, series ran from 1968 it says until today um i think it's just at this point reruns i know that they did a reboot of it um i don't know if that's still going uh the creator is don hewitt it was set as a tv news magazine each episode consists of several stories uh, which each presented by a different reporter um okay i'm sorry we got on that talk walker texas ranger and 60 minutes is still going on 
for some reason in my head, I thought it was Walker, Texas Rangers. So I apologize. No, 60 minutes is still going on till today. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> when I'm thinking 60 minutes, like the, the one where they just talk about new shit. Yeah, yeah. So it, it is yeah, okay. set. At, it was set as a TV news magazine. Each episode consists okay. of several stories, which each yeah. presented a di- by a different reporter. It stars Andrew. Sixty Rooney. minutes is boring, though. I mean, depending on what it is, uh, Andrew right. Rooney was a commentator. Host Leslie Stahl, host Stephen Croft. Um, some of the reporters that came on and off was Anderson Cooper, correspondent Dan mm-hmm. Rather. It was voted number six on TV Guide's 50 Greatest TV Shows of All Time. It's the only American television program of any kind to not have anything music. But yeah, because it, it only does. has that, that, that ticking, yeah. that ticking sound. <clears throat> Next time on 60 Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, <laughs> Yeah, um, I haven't seen a lot of 60 Minutes. I do know that uh, one of my favorite musical artists, Eminem, he was on 60 Minutes. Uh, Anderson Cooper actually interviewed him. I think it was for the Marshall Mathers uh, 2, I think, when, it, when that was coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did that. Or it could have been Recovery. I, I, I can't remember, but he, I mean, he was on there. Um, but yeah, I do know that 60 Minutes has... Uh, has been huge um unfortunately uh like all news stations it's not as bad as cnn as fox and stuff like that <clears throat> but it, it does you know try and hold truth as much as possible which is good and it's good to have um have you seen any episodes of 60 minutes no i've start like i started i can honestly say like say that like i've had it on tv like and it's been there and like i've caught like you know glimpses of it but i haven't actually sat there and and watched 60 minutes yeah like i've just seen clippings really like you like even the eminem one like it was all youtube stuff like just like you i haven't sat down and be like oh you know what let's grab some popcorn and some celery sticks and watch 60 minutes watch some 60 minutes no no no, that's not how it is. <laughs> All right, so sixty minutes is for old people. I- I'm just gonna say it. Y- you know, we're getting to that point, right? I just turned thirty. Oh, I just turned thirty-two on Sunday on Easter. Yeah, which you know, I I know I texted you it, but uh, yeah, for verbal and recording wise, happy belated birthday! And everybody right Thank now you. who's listening, leave a comment below on YouTube. Leave a comment anywhere. Wish Ro a happy birthday. Let's yeah, do that. we're not old. I mean, I'm turning well, 33 you, this you, year. You have the gray, but... Yeah. You, you know, a funny story. We went to uh, Universal Studios, <clears throat> and we went to the Irish bar there, and they asked for our IDs. My wife took out hers. I took off mine, and the lady was like... She, she looked at my wife's like, okay, you know, here you go. And then I went to hand mine... And the lady goes, oh, no, sweetie, you're okay. I can see the gray in the beard. You're fine. <laughs> I was like, Ooh, okay. That hurt. That okay. hurt. Yeah, just, it just hurt? a little. Yeah. It, it stung. It stung. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it was, but it was okay. It was a funny joke during that time. So it was good. I don't know. I don't know. That would have got me. I, I mean, it's a joke now that we can always say and makes my wife laugh every time. So even when she's uh, mad at me, like, remember that one time? Remember that one time? <laughs> All right. So number three, it looks like it was the Jeffersons, 7.5 out of 10 IMDb series from 1975 to 85. It is a African-American family who moved into a luxury apartment building, developed close, if occasionally fractious, fractious, fractious. Uh, relationship. Fractitious. Thank you. There you go. Saving those words with my word mumble. Uh, relationships with other tenants starred Isabel Stan- uh, Sanford, Sherman Hemsley, Roxy Roker, Franklin Cover, uh, Berlinda Tolbert. Uh, fun facts is Isabel Sanford was the first Black actress to win an outstanding lead actress in a comedy Emmy Award. Tom and Helen Willis were television's first white and black interracial couple. 
Oh, great. moving on up, moving on up to the east side. To the east we side. finally got a piece <laughs> of the pie. <laughs> so i know uh off recording i mentioned that i've actually i know the theme song of course um i know the theme song from the uh tv show scrubs because they sang it there but yeah. you wanted to talk about it because you have seen a few clips right yeah just uh just clips um the, i felt like the jeffersons was like you know the the I feel like a lot of TV shows, like I feel like Fresh Prince, uh, Martin, um, uh, I can't, I can't, I can't remember the other one. Uh, JJ's, uh, uh, is it? I can't remember the name, but like I felt like those and like Sanford and Son, like those for if it wasn't for like that TV show. Like we wouldn't have those TV shows because, like you know, it's like the Godfather of TV shows. You think so? Yeah, I know it definitely was one of those like uh, push boundaries and stuff like that during the time, which was great yeah. because like you kind of needed that. Like, oh, of um, course. I mean, first black interracial couple or interracial couple yeah, exactly. on, on TV show, fantastic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And then you have you know the the first black woman to win an emmy award fantastic like it, it it's sad to say that it, at that time it probably pushed boundaries but at the same time oh, like sure. like people just and, and that's the thing too like as sad as it's going to be um there's there's no way to i mean and racism at all as much as we try you're just going to have individuals that don't like that and th- and that's sad because us as human beings we are made to love one another we're made to support one another um i know back in the day there was a bunch of conquering of lands and stuff like that and that's what we did but it but it's sad because like you go to locations like for an example there's still slavery in africa there's still slavery in other parts of the world like even with um china and like uh, the uyghurs and stuff like that like what's going on over there it's we claim to be better than animals but it's not like another dog sees another dog and it's like i don't like that dog because he's he's a fucking you know uh he's a friend. chihuahua he's yeah he's a chihuahua <laughs> or he he's a like i don't see it's not like they're like, oh, he's a chihuahua, so he's a Mexican dog, or like he's a pit bull, so he's a black dog, or something like that. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work like that way. I think that's like what one thing humans lack when it comes to, like, you know, racism and stuff. We we say we're better than animals, but yeah, like that's something we couldn't, we can't get over. Like we can't, mm-hmm. you know, I we mean- can't progress in. Right. And, and and that's the thing. Like, uh, I know that there's a story of a African American man who uh, kind of uh, made friends with a leader of the KKK. I, I forgot the name of the guy, but he kind of like infiltrated the KKK and uh, he became really good friends with the guy who was the head guy. And it changed his like whole mindset on everything. And, and it was a great, fantastic story because like it just shows that you know individuals who you know may may not like certain things well you know just try and be friends try to learn trying to experience like it's why like why does there have to be like a divide really Mm -hmm. um and, and TV shows like the Jeffersons, yeah, you know, during that time period, it probably pushed boundaries, but that's what was needed because, I mean, if you look at many things, like, I'm happy that you and I today can be, like, the bestest of friends, can hang out, can, you know, do this podcast together, like, everything, where, you know, back in later on like early 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 in the years like we would still be best friends 
but at the same time like there would be so much heat for us being good friends for being best oh, yeah, friends and, and yeah, it'd be frowned upon 100%. it'd be frowned upon and, and it's so sad it's so sad like you're i guess i'm looking at like today like you're a great guy you're funny you're love to be hanging around with like you're knowledgeable and like uh especially you know during the time period of after the cp program like you were there for me like as a friend and as a good friend and as a best friend during like a part of my life where you know relationship ended and like you got me back on my feet Mm -hmm. and like i couldn't like I couldn't think of living back in that day and not, and not have that be a thing. Like, it's just, it's hard. So like TV shows like that, like Fresh Prince, like it's definitely what was needed and what is, I mean, in my mindset, it's wholesome. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's one thing that's, that's gonna, um, can, I can say we've progressed, but like it's like the the one thing that like I would say we slowed in progression because like everything else like we really want to work work on like it gets done like we have a, we have a new iPhone every year like there's a new I, iPhone every year right but then like. Like you still have in the NFL, like they're still making laws about hiring black head coaches. Like, like, dude, we have a we have new technology every year. Like, you guys are making bills like for random things every year, but we're still behind when it comes to you, you know, treating people equally. Oh, it's. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> and, and I mean, we can always have uh, further discussion on that. Which, by the way, you know, work in progress. Ro here is going to have his own uh, show himself, where you know, talk, you know, talking about these kinds of things, talking about relationships. So, good plug-in segment, I guess, for that. For mm-hmm. being on the lookout for that in the future, uh, and go ahead and let them know what it's going to be called. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. It's about uh, you know everyday stuff uh, whether if it's like what we're talking about now uh whether if it's talking about relationships movies uh, what's going on in the world today so i know we kind of steered away from the uh steered away from the list with you guys so the jeffersons (laughs) but we'll go ahead and continue get back on track as you will um number four is three's company 7.5 out of 10 imdb uh series 1976 to 8 1984 um it's the misadventures of two women and one man living in one apartment and their neighbors starred john ritter joyce do or i'm sorry dwight uh suzanne summers don knotts um priscilla barnes said her years on the show fun, so fun fact priscilla barnes said her years on the show were the unhappiest she's felt in her professional career she almost quit as soon as she was casted due to backstage atmosphere the exterior shots of the uh, roper's apartment was an actual corner apartment house in santa monica did you ever watch three's company i have not okay now that i've I've heard i've 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 heard about it but yeah same yeah i've never watched it uh, the, the last one, it looks like, uh, is called A Town Like Alice, 8.3 out of 10. It actually only aired in 1981. It's a love story about two lovers <clears throat> through a living nightmare of captivity across three continents and two decades. It's set against the chaos of World War II. Starred Helen Morris, Brian Brown, Gordon Jackson, John Lee. Uh, Fun fact is this was the first non-British production to air in the U.S. on Masterpiece Classic. The Alice, quote unquote, of the miniseries Little A-Town, like Alice refers to the town of Alice Springs in the Northern Territory of Australia. Didn't know that. Uh, Me personally, never watched it, never knew about it until today. Same? Same. All right. Well, and with that, you guys, that is the show for this week of the top 
five TV shows of 1981. Stay tuned for next week while we go to the top cartoons. And with that, uh, again, follow, like us all on social media platforms. Uh, TikTok is a new thing. And other than that, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Bye.